bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. <laughs> Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you. Forever on Ferrate. On and on it goes, for untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising, rising, above the dark curvature, the great wingspan of sleep, studded with stars. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time. The last time. The smoke in our mouth. The plotted flowers. The faces turning, changing. It's the world, Harry boy. And you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. All stuck on loop. Whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister, a ceaseless agent, picking up litter and old newspapers, collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? For the working class. For the money, baby. For the greater good. For Revacon. Always and only Revacon. Solving your little crossword puzzles. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. He's got no idea what he's in for. Beep, beep, beep! The alarm is ringing, Harry! The disco circus goes on and on! You barely slept three hours last night! Rise and shine, comrade. It's time to get to work. Despite all the thinking you've been doing, only zero point. 0001% of communism has been built. It's too great a task to undertake alone. You're going to have to get organized. It's good that your personal business is in order, but we're talking about political matters of world historical import here. You must seek out your revolutionary brothers and sisters. Find out how much communism they've built. Then, together, 
maybe you'll be able to build as much as 0.0002% of communism. But it won't be easy. Decades of persecution by coalition authorities have driven the remaining communists of Martinez underground. Let your nose guide you, detective. No, we meant your nose, as in that swollen muck detector in the center of your face. It just happens to be perfectly calibrated for sensing communists. We really have no idea what they're talking about. There's no linkage between ideology and our faction. First, you'll have to locate the remaining communists in Martinez. When you get near to someone with revolutionary potential, your nose will give you the signal to establish contact. Again, no, it won't. Any olfactory response you perceive will be strictly psychosomatic. You should begin by interrogating those lawless malcontents at the Dock Workers Union. They're an obvious place to start. You'll discuss the monumental world historical task that lies before you. You'll engage in rigorous and spirited debates about Mazovian theory and practice, but mostly you'll probably complain about other communists. Here we go. Wake, brave worker, tis no time for bed. Fight till there's no slaves below and no masters overhead. What's that, boy, yeah? Now's your chance. Remember, communists are notoriously skittish, so it's best to insinuate your way in. Hold on. This isn't a man who goes in for subterfuge. He prefers someone who look him in the eye and say exactly what's on his mind. Now, that is an important subject but also a sensitive one. Still, good of you to just come straight out with it. No beating around the bush. Yes, he certainly has a way of just coming out and saying things that normal people wouldn't. So you've given up copying and now you're hunting comunistas. Care to say why? Oh, I see. I wish I could help. Unfortunately, I don't know many comunistas. Maybe. Maybe not. Either way, I'm not institutional. A man's got to blaze his own trail, in my book. Okay, so maybe he's not exactly a communist, but there's definitely some communistic residue about him. Ah, but you know, I did meet a genuine ideologo a few months ago. Perhaps, you know, a guy with a theory. Someone who likes to pit his theory against other theories in deadly theory combat. It was late one night as I was leaving the arbor. He was waiting on the corner in a bright white jacket. Classic Saramirizian style. He asked me for a light. We shared cigarettes. Then he asked me if I ever thought about getting into some of the extra physical branches of communism. See, all this political chit chat is just an excuse to rip tar with strangers. Let's say we just skip right to the good part then. The same thing I always tell people who try to press some claim on me. I said, every boyadero rides alone. I couldn't tell you. Once I declined his offer, we finished our cigarettes and he disappeared back into the night. Just before he melted into the shadows, he turned to me and said, remember Dobrava and Abba Danais. And then he was gone. I don't know. Guess not everyone remembers. Been wondering about that myself. Some communista inside talk with me. Not meant for the wider public. They love that kind of thing. You'd have to ask someone who knows this ideologo personally. I have to say, though, it sounds like you found yourselves a proper hunt. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural?
And what do you know about politics? Oh, that's very nice. Little Piggy wants to make sausages. Out of what? His little piggy friends? So the little piggy is a big bad communist now. Sure. I know someone who'd love to talk the ideological stuff. You're looking for Stepan. A right communist who runs a mega cool and very secret meeting. He might. No. <sighs> A wicked grin extends across her face. Oink for me, piggy. Just once. Wrong! This is exactly how I treat my little brother. Be a good pig now. No oink, no goods. Well, well. Seems like we're dealing with one tough pig. I'm impressed. Yes, somehow you managed to oink with at least a modicum of dignity. The lieutenant, needless to say, is not impressed. Sounds like you're really serious about meeting Stepan. It's touching. Sort of. Stepan's group meets only at night, in an old room in these apartments here. It just so happens you're in luck. Their weekly meeting is tonight. Poke your snout around sometime after 10 p.m. and you might just find them. Just that he's a real communist. Not like the play acting you've been doing. The rest, you'll have to see for yourself. Oh, smart pig. Because there is. See, Stepan's a bit on the paranoid side. He's got all these mega secret pass phrases to keep out infiltrators and the like. You can't join the meeting without one. <clears throat> Not to interfere in your personal errand, but I wonder whether it might have something to do with that phrase Manana mentioned overhearing. The lieutenant nods. Guess this is what happens when two pigs put their heads together. That's enough. Off with you then. Shelves full of biographies of famous people, whoever they are. A true cultural touchstone. Enjoy the read. As you approach the metal grill, you can hear several voices having what appears to be an animated discussion. This must be it. Beyond this door, somehow, the night air softens the smell of trash and sea brine. As the breeze pulls through the canvas like a shuttle through a loom, you catch a hint of something unexpected. The acrid smell of failure. No, that's just slightly burnt coffee. A smell you would recognize anywhere. Just look at this pig, sniffing about after hours. Must have slipped my mind. You know how it goes. The metal grill is cool to the touch. The clang of metal reverberates all along the scaffolding. The voices coming from the other side fall silent. A pair of frightened hares cowering in some dark crevice of their burrow. Who's there? Is that you, Maurice? Who said communist? Did we say communist? Get out of here. For a moment, 
silence. What's the passphrase? There's no response. You begin to wonder whether they've slipped out some back way. No, they're still there. You can feel them back there. All right. The key's taped to the back of the doorframe. Just make sure you put it back when you're done, or we'll all be locked out. And do watch the concrete. It just kind of falls away, in places. Have fun at your underground meeting, pig. Hope it's a blast. The two young men are either oblivious to or ignoring your entrance. Their attentions are fixed on whatever it is they're stacking in the middle of the floor. Matchboxes, it appears. I think he's holding Ulexis. It is. It's ho careful, careful. Damn, hardly any difference. You're late. He should know the meeting starts at 10 p.m. sharp. One leader and one follower. The most ancient power dynamic. There's a great deal of tension in this young man's shoulders. More than someone his age should bear. Meanwhile, his companion inclines toward him, eager to catch every word that dribbles from his friend's mouth. That's the whole point, of course. We can't just have anybody waltzing in here. Martinez is crawling with reactionary infiltrators. To say nothing of Godwaldians and Econo Clarence. The young man's companion reflexively snorts at the mention of Godwaldians and Econo Clarence. We all have to take precautions, especially during these delicate times. What matters is that you've made it and that you've done the reading. A revolutionary reading group, the most ideologically advanced materialist reading group in Martinez. But it sounds like that's news to you. Maybe he can explain himself. In the most generous sense, I would say we're cultivating revolutionary consciousness. Yes, that's probably the best way to describe it. But more specifically, we are running a reading group, the most rigorous and theoretically advanced materialist reading group in Martinez. Comrade Stepan is a great discussion leader, one of the best at the university. Dion, can you imagine anything duller than a bunch of beano clouds yanking each other's knobs? That's our whole thing. The world is so shallow, all noise and repetition. We're interested in genuinely radical critique. Precisely. We are not interested in senseless parroting. We like to read critically. Within the contours of Mazovian historical materialism, of course. Huh. As though you can call that problem teaching. One thing you learn quickly at university is that you're not going to find a real education in any lecture hall or discussion seminar. We are post-attendance, basically. Exactly. The only worthwhile part of the so-called École Normale de Revachol is the library. That's where we've made our greatest critical strides. Go ahead. The young man frowns at the little pile of boxes on the floor. Nothing, just messing around until the meeting started. They're watching those matchboxes awfully intently for two guys who are just messing around. It's almost as though they were trying to create the most unstable structure they could. We typically only accept new members once per semester. 
There's this whole process with essays and presentations on assigned topics. But given that we have some extra seating at the moment, I guess we could be convinced to expedite an application or two. Steven, you can't be serious. For Jandam? I am serious. As materialists, we've got to adapt to conditions as they are. Besides, he still need to pass the interview portion of the entrance process. Assuming he's even still interested, that is. What's there to be scared of? You've really been cracking the books these last few days. You can go toe to intellectual toe with any reading group in Martinez. You've spent a not inconsiderable amount of time arranging the works in your mental library by theme and period. All the ideas and references you'll need are ready at hand. Now, chin up. You've got this. Oh, you want to start now? Sure, we can manage that. You've caught him off balance. The momentum is already in your favor. Go ahead and take a seat. Since we haven't had time to prepare an exhaustive questionnaire, I think we can keep this interview more freeform. Why don't you tell us a bit about the books you're interested in, and we'll just see where the conversation goes. Aha, a real old-school pedestrian materialist. All right, we'll play along. So what sort of practical works are we talking about? Interesting. I always thought that stuff was common folk superstitions. We packaged as bourgeois spiritualism. Maybe I've been overly dismissive. This is a good start. They're starting to loosen up. You feel relaxed and in control. Soon, you're debating whether a decommodified spirituality is even possible under capitalism. Probably not, is the answer. Which isn't to say it isn't sometimes still useful. Ogotwalian will tell you that it's an inescapable fact of modernity, that we can only repackage our collective history in increasingly ludicrous forms. Thank God we are no good Wallians. These kids are eating out of your hand, practically. Another quarter of an hour disappears. The questions come rapid fire, but you have an answer for every one. Now you can sense things starting to slow down. The interview must be reaching an inflection point. Don't you think, though, that you can only really understand current events if you have a firm background in history and political theory? Hmm. Don't think I'm familiar with it. Give us a quick summary, if you don't mind. Now's your chance to end this interview on a high note. You quickly gloss Lopez de Fuego's essential argument, peppering it with your own commentary and asides. But then, any critical account of Dolores Day's reign has to seriously reckon with her atrocities in Margaritania and La Vuelta during the Mesque secession, don't you think? Total nonsense. The greatest thing Dolores Day ever did was get blasted by her own therrier. If he wants a real critical history, he's got to read on the material conditions of the Mirovan Boilermakers. He's so good. Brutally revelatory. In any case, I think we've heard enough. We could use someone with your perspective in a group, with just a bit more theoretical foundation. I think you'll be making real contributions. Yes, I would say he's got serious potential at least. And with that, welcome to the most ideologically advanced materialist reading group in Martinez. Here's your first assignment. It's an overview of inframaterialist theory. A little basic, as you'll see, but one has to start somewhere. Come back when you're done. We'll be here pretty much every night after 10pm. 
do be sure to take your time with the reading. We'll be eager to hear your thoughts. The cover of this pocket-sized volume features a swirl of orange, yellow, and green. The title, A Brief Look at Inframaterialism, is set in an authoritative yet approachable serif font. What an interesting color palette. It's vibrant, yet somehow leaves you ever so slightly nauseated. On the inside jacket flap, you find a brief summary. What is inframaterialism? A highly theoretical branch of Mazovian communism? A collection of mystical ramblings by a discredited revolutionary? Or possibly both? This brief look, TM, introduces readers to one of this century's most fascinating and misunderstood theories in a concise, jargon-free manner. There is no more. You've reached the outer theoretical limits of communism, and in less than 200 pages. If you'd like to read further, may we recommend a brief look at Occidental architecture? You're back. Ah, yeah, it's hers. She just sort of moved it all in a few months ago. She said if she's going to make truly radical art, she needs a suitably radical workspace. And I don't think she could afford rent at an actual studio. Oh, sure. It's definitely interesting, I would say. Interesting. Isn't that just Bino Cloud for, I don't have a real opinion? His companion's eyes widen with interest. He has a cold smile. Come on. It's not that I don't have anything to say about Cindy's art. It's more that I'm still working out the details. It's a complex question. You've got to take your time with it. Hmm, I guess you could call her latest stuff a sort of counter-bourgeoisie calligraphy. She's got a real taste for radical slogans. It's too bad she hasn't developed the theoretical foundation to do truly radical work. I think she'll get there, though. She's still looking for a subject equal to her ambitions. Go ahead. Yes, let's get right to it. His companion leans forward, ready to jump in. They're impressed that you dove right into the most advanced parts of the theory. Half an hour evaporates and the conversation is still wending its way toward new and unexpected places. No, no, no. You're saying he doesn't need to open them because he absorbs all the relevant content just by staring intently at the cover. It's a widely understood second-level effect. We've tried it ourselves, but thus far we haven't been able to absorb more than the preface and table of contents. Has it gotten cold in here? Your arms seem to be covered in goose flesh. Well, on that note, I think we're gonna call it an evening. No, wait. Can this really be the end? You feel like you've just gotten to the real stuff. Yes. One of our better discussions lately, on the whole. What do you mean, is that it? You've done the reading, we talked about it. What more do you expect from a reading group? Well, you could always ask, I guess. He probably won't get a better chance, honestly. But it's getting late, so maybe pick the most important question. The question you mean to ask is both very complicated 
and incredibly simple. The young man waits patiently for you to finish. Yes? The young man considers your words for a minute. You're witnessing his ironic armor melt before you. This is his true self you're seeing now. There's something going on in there, but his innermost sanctum is still beyond your reach. The theorists Buncher and Watman, not inframaterialists, but theorists nonetheless, say that communism is a secular version of Perikanasian theology, that it replaces faith in the divine with faith in humanity's future. I have to say, I've never entirely understood what they mean, but I think maybe the answer is in there, somewhere. Only in this very specific sense. Communism doesn't dangle any promises of eternal bliss or reward. The only promise it offers is that the future can be better than the past, if we're willing to work and fight and die for it. Nobody said fulfilling the proletariat's historic role would be easy. It demands great faith with no promise of tangible reward. But that doesn't mean we can simply give up. Even then. Mazov tells us to laugh at the monster that hides behind false hopes and pieties. Why do you see the two of them with their backs against a bullet pop wall all of a sudden? Their faces blurred yet frozen as though in ambrotype. You were never that young, were you? I guess you could say we believe it because it's impossible. It's our way of saying we refuse to accept that the world has to remain. Like this. Yes, that's a good way to think of it. Broken, but not irreparable. A thought can be a very powerful thing. That's the whole idea of inframaterialism. Devon, it's getting pretty late. You're right. We should clean this up and get going. Of course, the matchboxes. You'd very nearly forgotten to ask about them. Now may be your last chance. So you really did read all the way to the end? Yeah. Uli and I were trying to see whether there was enough plasm between the two of us to hold up a few matchboxes. It was just a little informal experiment. No reason to take it too seriously. The young man looks at you a moment, then at his companion. What could it hurt? All right, let's give it another go. Before long, a modest tower begins to rise from the pile of matchboxes. You place every box with the utmost delicacy and precision. Easy, Uli. It's holding. It's holding. The higher the tower goes, the quieter the room seems to become. Aside from the occasional comment, the three of you are completely absorbed by the task. All right. You go next, Stepan. The young man pushes back his shirt sleeves, revealing the pale flesh of his forearms. Is it? It's holding. It's holding. Ah, shit. It's all right, Stepan. That was still very close, one of our best performances yet. It's fine, Uli. That's enough parlor games for one night. We should clean up. Yes, it's probably time for you to take your leave as well. Wait a minute, if you don't mind. We wanted to get your opinion on something. A few little changes we've been thinking about. Nothing too major, I think. We were talking, potentially, about relaxing some parts of our admissions process. That's interesting. I saw people love group interviews. 
I thought so too, but perhaps we overdid it, just a little. There was another thing. We were also debating putting up some posters around town. Though some of us maintain that advertising is an unacceptably bourgeois tactic. That's what makes it so beautiful. The irony is unbeatable. That's exactly what I was thinking. Mm hmm. I guess no one could accuse Cindy of having a bourgeois aesthetic. Plus, I've got the perfect place in mind. Put some more coffee on, Uli. We've got a long night ahead of us. We should probably get Cindy in here, too. Oh, and gendarme. One last thing. About that question you asked earlier. It reminded me of a certain poem that you might appreciate. Ah. So he has read something besides his books of abstruse theory. It was written by a young communard who was killed on the barricades during the coalition landings. The story goes that he wrote it on the last night of his life, keeping watch from the barricades in the middle of the night. I don't have the whole thing committed to memory, but there's a line in it I think about sometimes. In dark times, should the stars also go out? Anyway... Good night to you.